Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. With an annual revenue of over 58 billion US dollars in 2022, Airbus is one of the world's most successful aircraft manufacturers. First established in 1970, the company produces a wide range of civil and military products. including the A320 family of twin-engine airliners and the A380, the world's largest passenger plane. In 2015, Airbus introduced the A350 XWB. Short for extra wide body, the XWB class is a family of long-range, wide-body airliners boasting fuselage and wing structures made primarily of carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Combined with advanced aerodynamics and other state-of-the-art improvements, this drastically improves the plane's performance and fuel efficiency. Meanwhile, the wide-body cabin provides extra comfort for up to 350 passengers at a time. As a multinational company, various parts of the A350 are manufactured at facilities all over Europe. These are then united at the company's main facility in Toulouse, France. On top of assembling the wings, landing gear, and engines, each plane's interior and exterior are customized to the buyer's standards and color-coded to fit their brand. One of the most important processes new Airbus planes must undergo is what is known as static ground testing. This consists of two main evaluations, mechanical load tests and pressurization tests. Both pushing the aircraft to its structural limits. During the process, the aircraft is outfitted with sensors and strain gauges that measure the response of different components. Hydraulic jacks and other devices apply controlled forces to the wings, fuselage, and tail to simulate these various flight conditions. One of the critical aspects of this testing is the wing bend test, where the wings are flexed upwards and downwards to extreme angles, far beyond what would be experienced in normal flight, to test their strength and flexibility. During pressurization evaluations, various components are subjected to air pressure similar to what the plane might encounter when climbing, cruising at high altitudes, and descending. During the process, evaluators also include checking for any potential leaks and ensuring that all seals and joints can maintain airtight integrity. The A350 was also the first Airbus aircraft to undergo a whole new level of extreme weather testing. This testing took place at the U.S. Air Force's McKinley Climatic Laboratory in Florida, a facility renowned for its ability to replicate a wide range of environmental conditions. Here, the A350 XWB was exposed to temperatures varying from a scorching 45 degrees Celsius to a frigid negative 40 degrees Celsius. This rigorous testing was critical for validating the performance of various aircraft systems. But Airbus was not quite done with the plane. Next, the A350 XWB underwent real-life cold weather tests in Iqaluit, Canada, where it faced temperatures as low as negative 28 degrees Celsius.
These tests provided a practical evaluation of the aircraft's performance in actual cold weather conditions, as opposed to the controlled environment of the McKinley Laboratory. Not only was the aircraft itself tested, but the flight crew, ground crew, and refueling equipment were also subjected to the frigid conditions. This further ensured the A350 would be ready to handle virtually any conditions, no matter how extreme. Even after an aircraft has been tested and found suitable for extreme weather conditions, it will still need frequent treatment and intervention in order to operate safely. For instance, ice accumulation from cold weather can significantly alter an aircraft's aerodynamics, affecting lift and increasing drag. More critically, ice buildup on the wings, control surfaces, and other vital areas can hinder the plane's ability to take off, maneuver, and land safely. For this reason, all aircraft, new and old, must be regularly de-iced if the ground crews determine that conditions warrant it. De-icing is typically carried out close to the plane's departure time to ensure maximum effectiveness. During de-icing, a special fluid, usually a mixture of propylene glycol or ethylene glycol and water, is heated and placed on the surface of the plane to remove any accumulated ice, snow, or frost. There are generally two types of fluids used. The first removes existing ice, and the second prevents new snow and ice from forming. After de-icing is complete, the ground crews will reinspect the plane to ensure no remnants are left. Though ensuring the planes are operating properly is very important, the biggest factor in preventing cold weather accidents is the maintenance of the runways, tarmac, and other airport infrastructure. Indeed, airports worldwide employ a wide range of methods to keep their runways clear of snow and ice while preventing travel delays. This starts with specialized snow plows and brushers, which help move accumulated snow from the actual runways and taxi areas. Airport personnel also use de-icing chemicals such as potassium acetate or calcium magnesium acetate to prevent ice buildup and ensure the surface remains safe for aircraft operations. To minimize risks, some airports have installed heating systems beneath the runway surface. These systems can be turned on during snowfalls to melt snow and prevent ice formation. Airports also have dedicated teams that constantly monitor weather conditions and runway surfaces. These men and women perform regular friction testing on runway surfaces to assess the level of grip available for aircraft during takeoff and landing. As important as plane de-icing is for commercial airlines, military aircraft cannot simply delay a mission due to weather. That's why the United States and many other military powers invest billions of dollars each year into making sure their aircraft are ready for anything.
One of the most important facilities in this process is the Propulsion Wind Tunnel at Arnold Air Force Base in Tennessee. This particular site offers two full-sized wind tunnels, one for supersonic flight, one for transonic flight, and a third smaller tunnel focused on transonic aerodynamics. This diversity allows for a wider range of testing scenarios, all of which play a crucial role in how aircraft and aerospace systems are designed, developed, and improved. The facility is so powerful, it can simulate speeds of up to Mach 4.75, or over 3,600 miles per hour. As with Airbus's A350XWB, the Air Force also utilizes the McKinley Climate Testing Laboratory climatic chamber to evaluate various military aircraft. One of the many aircraft to undergo testing at the site is the F-35 Lightning II, the most advanced and expensive fighter plane in history. This particular F-35 model was subjected to a six-month assessment at the laboratory. This testing aimed to certify the aircraft's ability to deploy to any corner of the world, including conditions representative of all 13 countries involved with the F-35 program. During the tests, the plane was exposed to everything from wind and solar radiation to fog, humidity, rain, ice, and snow. Nevertheless, no amount of preparation, testing, or treatment can prevent ice from forming on the surface of military aircraft in cold weather conditions. For this reason, the Air Force and Navy also utilize a de-icing process similar to what's seen at commercial airports. The only real difference is that the process is considered more urgent in military situations, as the aircraft need to be ready to take off and perform their missions at a moment's notice. Militaries are tasked with operating in a wide range of environments, including regions known for extreme cold. This poses several logistical challenges, especially for larger planes that cannot move under their own power. Standard pushback trucks and other airport vehicles are not always ideal for these conditions. So tractors and oversized tow vehicles are often used. However, some engineers have taken it upon themselves to design planes specifically for cold weather operations. A great example of this is the LC-130, a variation of the Lockheed C-130 Hercules transport. This variant is specifically designed for Arctic and Antarctic operations, primarily to support scientific research and supply missions. The most distinctive feature of the LC-130 is the ski-equipped landing gear, which allows it to land safely on snow and ice. However, when needed, it can still land on conventional runways as well. The LC-130 is proof that no environment is too harsh for aircraft operation, providing proper precautions are taken.
Thanks to aircraft like these, militaries are forging new ground in the places where such operations were previously impossible. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.